Uh, we all know the winter season is in full yeah. effect, and as temperatures continue to drop, it's important to know how to protect your pets from the harsh weather. Animal behavior specialist Steve Dale joins us now with tips and details on a new challenge honoring the great Betty White. Thanks so much for being here. Oh, thank you so much for allowing me to be here and to talk about Betty White. I mean, she was such an animal advocate. Totally. I, I would call Betty White's secretary at the time, Donna. Yeah. And, oh, it's Steve Dale, me. <laughs> of course she'll talk to you because she knew I would talk about animals. That's and so and she was happy to talk about her work. She loved her work, lived for her work. You know, the same thing that got her on Saturday Night Live was this Facebook effort, right, by millions of people. Well, right now, something like that is happening. It's called the Betty White Challenge, hashtag Betty White Challenge. And the idea is to give to your local animal shelter, no matter what that shelter is, which might be Anti-Cruelty Society in Chicago, and there's a Betty White connection that oh. I can explain in a second. Betty White, though, had her favorite charities. She was on the board of trustees for decades with the Morris Animal Foundation. She would say, well, they can't get rid of me, and here I am, and the Los Angeles Zoo as well. But to any, any animal shelter, if you can give your time or five bucks to five million if you have it, uh -huh. uh, she would just love that. That's and people wonderful. are probably like, what's going on with his arm yeah, over there? Yeah, why your left arm? What's going on? Tell At us about that. At the end of my arm is yeah. a dog from Anti-Cruelty Society. So Dr. Lester Fisher, former director of the Lincoln Park Zoo, mm -hmm. was on the board of the Anti-Cruelty Society and a friend of Betty White's, Dr. Fisher, just passed away before his 100th oh, and no. first birthday. Okay. Mm -hmm. And she just before her 100th birthday. Oh, that's so cool. there's a connection between the two organizations. This at the end of my left arm, and you're looking at her right now, that's Hazel. Beautiful little Hazel. And she is available for adoption. Oh, that is amazing. Hazel. And she's modeling a gorgeous sweater. Which dogs need right now. Yes, that's so what I'm So you guys, you guys know how to do TV. You prepared the weather right. for this segment. <laughs> right. Yeah, because it's, 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 it's <laughs> Perfect, because no dog, I don't care if it's a Husky, a Malamute, a Newfoundland, should be out very long when we're talking single digits. Yes, okay, absolutely. And dogs feel wind chill too, by the way. Okay. Do dogs need coats or jackets? Yes, they can. You know, now we know sighthounds. They have body fat that is in the single digits. I wish I was a sight hound. <laughs> no too. body fat at all. <laughs> right. You know, so they need anywhere below, say, 40 degrees. Okay. They need a coat or a jacket. Any small dog defined as 25 pounds, 20 pounds or less, yep. anything under 32 degrees. So okay. in this weather, absolutely. But even those big dogs, this is the kind of weather where I say hit and run. Okay. You know, you just take them out to do their business. So hopefully they run right back in the house. My dad had a husky, and the thing just wanted to play in the snow. She would dive out there and, like, roll around. He couldn't get her back in the house. Yeah, I mean, I, listen, if it's 30 degrees, 25 degrees, something like that, those yeah. dogs actually live yeah. for that kind of weather. I mean, that's what they get up in the morning in June, hoping for, <laughs> please, December, come any moment. Yes. You know, they love that kind of weather, yeah. you know. Now, go ahead. Yeah. Now, what about the uh, booties that you put on the bottom of their feet? I, I mean, was just going to talk booty talk. <laughs> booty, so, talk. <laughs> booty talk. So these are important. Okay. I mean, they really are. Yeah. You know, because that street salt, we, we see these yes. dogs do one of two things. They either stand still like they're statues. Yes. Or the they wedding. do that. The dance. Yeah, yeah. 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 And they're not doing that to entertain us. <laughs> they are not trying to be Britney Spears. They are doing it because it hurts. And when cold weather combined with the salt, Combined with snow, yeah. these little ice balls form in their pads. In the pair of the yeah, pads? I yeah. hate that. So here's the secret. You won't tell anyone? Okay, don't tell anybody. Uh, if, you, if your dog says, I'm not going to do booties, and by the way, it is a manly thing to do, <laughs> search and rescue dogs have booties I know, on. Yes, you know? Yes. So there's nothing. I did a rod dogs. Yeah. Those tough dogs, they have booties yeah. on. You know? A little secret is Pam, the cooking spray. Uh -huh. You can spray it on. The dog's paw pads, not the flavored ones, because they're just going to lick it right, it right off. Yeah. Yeah, but the, the, and, and what happens is it just kind of slides right off the snow and the ice and really? the salt okay. for a block or two or three. Oh, right. okay. And it then it just doesn't. Long. Right, yeah. right. And there's also a product called Musher's Wax that you can get online because you can get anything online and also most pet stores. Oh, wow. That's good to know. I did, that wasn't around when my last dog was no. with us. And, and he <laughs> refused to wear the booties. Yeah, some dogs just. So you begin by training them in the house. With and booties? Yeah. Yeah, and then mm -hmm. you take them outside. Dogs can get frostbite as well. So their ears, their, their tails, their nose. You know, so far, as far as I know, but it's a good idea, 
if, if you know any inventors out there. <laughs> uh, a glove for dog tails. Ooh. Oh, yeah, if interesting. There, if there were such a thing, but there <laughs> isn't. So look for a little bit of swelling, a little bit of redness. Okay. The idea is you've got to be smarter than your dog, which I know can be challenging. <laughs> and then bring the dog in the house if you think, okay, enough is enough. What I do is I don't wear gloves when I go out. And if my fingers... I know, not too smart. But but <laughs> if my fingers are getting really cold, no, it's I a know good gauge. the yeah. dog is too. Yeah, Wait, yeah. A good gauge. Because you expect them to, if it's cold outside, dummy come in the house. But that's not all what they'll do. A lot of them will no. just kind of tough it out if they sense something that they really are into. Uh, absolutely right. Yeah. I mean, uh, those goofy labs, you just keep throwing the tennis ball, throwing <laughs> yeah. the tennis And this dog, who's so energetic at the age of nine. Yeah. So if, if anyone is interested in adopting any dog at any time, that's a good idea. Yeah. The shelters have more of them now. Yeah. Because it seems everyone during the pandemic said, I want a dog, so they've got their dog. So now the shelters are looking for homes. Anti-cruelty society, the same. This dog is nine years old, perhaps, but does not act like a senior dog. There's oh. some dental issues, maybe some other issues with this dog. But she, she's beautiful. She is. Yeah. She it's is. Lovely person. And, and, out and yeah. so stylish in this coat. So stylish in her blue coat. <laughs> well, Steve, yeah. thank you so much for being here. Blue's a great fantastic. color for TV, right? It is great a great color. Well, look at our set. Of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we knew this. Right, exactly. Yeah. Thank All you, right, guys. Thank you. All right.